Welcome back to another Doctor Who ranking video. Uh, I posted season one video last week. It's already on like 50 views or something, so thank you for the support on that. Um, this is season two ranked, please enjoy. So at number nine, last place, we've got the web planet. This is the first Doctor Who story that I was reviewing at the time that was genuinely bad. There have been some mess stories, but none as bad as this. The worst part was that it actually had a promising start. Episode 1 is decent, and it would get this story a few points, if the other parts weren't so bad. The set is actually really good, I just wish we could see it through the steamed up studio cameras. I wish I could praise the costume design of the monsters too. No comment. Almost everything is bad about this story, but I'll give it a pity point for the first episode. One out of ten. So at number eight, we've got The Rescue. This two-parter used to be one of my least favourite Hartnell stories, but after reading the incredibly expensive Target book and re-watching it, it isn't so bad. It introduces Vicky and does a pretty good job at it. One of my complaints is that it's literally a murder mystery with one suspect. Coquillian is so obviously Bennett, plus the sand beast effects are really, really bad. The set designs and model sequences are quite good though. Overall, I don't really have much to say about this. It's just various shades of average. 5 out of 10. So at number 7, we've got Planet at... Planet at Giants? Planet of Giants. This story is a bit of a weird one because the first time I watched it, I absolutely hated it. But when I rewatched it, it was alright. Originally, I would have said that it was boring and awful, but I actually don't mind it now. I think that if it was a four-parter as originally intended, it would have been a lot worse. It sort of works well as a three-parter. The ending is quite clever too when they are all returned to normal size and Barbara is cured of the insecticide. This idea was originally intended for the first ever Doctor Who story, you know, with um, them being shrunk down to the size of a pea. But uh, I'm glad it wasn't. I think the show needed to find its feet before this story was made. Some of the sets and effects are a little silly too, but overall I think this is just above average. 6 out of 10. So at number 6, we've got The Crusade. I will come clean and admit that The Crusade is one of my guilty pleasures. I don't even really know why I like it. I just love the whole atmosphere and feel of it. I do have a few criticisms though. The actor for Richard is very dramatic at times, like when he nearly smacked his sister. Now get out! Get out! Joanna, I beg you to accept. No! I entreat you, Joanna. No! Very well! I am the king! We command you! You defy me with the Pope! No! You defy the world with your politics! The reason you and all your armies are here is the reason on my side. You are here to fight these dogs, defeat them, marry me to them, and you make a pact with the devil. Force me to it, and I'll turn the world we know into your enemy. It's hard to take seriously. On the other hand, though, Jean Marsh is as great as always. Plus, I love the whole thing with Ian being knighted. It's just such a good idea. Unfortunately, this is the third missing episode we've come across, and like the other early Hartnell missing episodes, the audio that exists is quite low quality. The reconstructions by Loose Cannon are quite good though, and if you want to watch The Crusade, I highly recommend it. So I'm going to give this a 7 out of 10. So at number 5, I've got The Space Museum. This is quite a fun little story. A bit like the calm before the storm, the Space Museum is a very ambitious story, with the revolution at the end and the strange costume design. 
Episode 1 is by far the best episode. It throws you in at the deep end, where a strange time event happens, and the cliffhanger when they arrive is genius. Episode 2, 3, and 4 are a little bit weaker, but they're still alright. The scenes with the Doctor and the mind-reading machine are funny, and the whole thing about changing the future is an idea repeated over and over again in Doctor Who. Even New Who. When I first watched it, I didn't appreciate it much, but now I really like it. Plus, it leads directly into the chase, and well, we'll get into that. So I'm gonna give this a 7 out of 10. So at number 4, we have The Time Meddler. This story brings the season to a conclusion. When I first watched The Time Meddler back in my first Doctor Who marathon, it bored me, quite honestly. Whenever I would hear someone say that they liked this episode, I would frown to myself and ask why. But now I've rewatched it, I see it for what it is. One of the best historicals from Hartnell's era. It's not like a pure historical, it isn't a strict historical, but I'd still count it as an historical. It's also a comedy, which earlier Doctor Who didn't do much of. Another thing is that it's a proper introductory story for Steven Taylor. Of course he was introduced during the chase, but in this story we get to know him a little better. We see how stubborn he is, not believing that the TARDIS is a time machine, and we also see him getting to know Vicky and the Doctor. We also have our first encounter with another Time Lord, which is revealed when Steven and Vicky find the Monk's TARDIS in the cliffhanger of episode 3, and the way the Monk is trying to change history is quite quite clever. The Monk had, and still has, a lot of potential, and that's why they brought him back for the Daleks' master plan. If they brought him back for New Who, he wouldn't look out of place. Overall, this story is quite good, so I'm gonna give it a 7 out of 10. At number 3, we have The Romans. The Romans is an extremely fun historical story that develops all of the regulars really well. You have scenes with Ian and Barbara at the Roman house, almost flirting with each other, which is honestly one of my favourite Hartnell scenes. You also have the first Doctor, William Hartnell, literally getting into a scrap with a Roman assassin because the assassin thinks he's a musician. The actor that plays Nero captures his insanity with perfection. I've always loved when Doctor Who has been involved with a significant historical event, and the fact that the Doctor gave Nero the idea to burn down Rome. I don't know if it's just me, but that's hilarious. Another annoying thing, though, is that after Ian and Barbara have been sold into slavery and have been on this massive adventure, nearly bumping into the Doctor and Vicky in the process, they never really find out the whole story. The Doctor and Vicky never find out that all of this happened. Vicky sort of is told about it at the start of the web planet, but there wasn't any follow-ups. Unfortunately, the target novelization of this story is the worst thing I've ever read. It took this amazing historical and turned it into something just plain awful. I see what the writer was trying to do with the diary entries, but it was just... It was appalling, in my opinion. Even though the novelization is bad, it doesn't ruin the actual story. If I was reviewing the Target book, it would get a 0 out of 10, but as I'm reviewing the actual televised story, it gets a 7 out of 10. At number 2, we have the Dalek Invasion of Earth. The Dalek Invasion of Earth is just another iconic Doctor Who story. We have our first ever Earth invasion, and the Doctor can't stop it because it's already happened. The TARDIS team are instantly split up and sent on their own journeys, meeting many secondary characters that nearly all die. The utterly iconic imagery of the Daleks in London will be replayed over and over for years.
Imagining the impact of episode 1's cliffhanger on the audience of the 1960s is just ridiculous, especially when the Daleks had already been merchandised a considerable amount already. Dalek stories in the Hartnell era just get better and better as it goes on. The story does drag slightly, but hardly. This is also the first ever companion departure, and this is essential to the show as it's how it renews itself. I think every Doctor Who fan knows Hartnell's famous goodbye speech off by heart. One day, I shall come back. Yes, I shall come back. Until then, there must be no regrets, no tears, no anxieties. Just go forward in all your beliefs and prove to me that I am not mistaken in mine. That just shows how iconic it is. Usually when Doctor Who companions are married off, it bothers me how quickly they get together. For example, Joe Grant and Leela. But in this story, I don't really mind because the events are stretched out and you can actually see Susan fall in love with him. So, because of all of this, I'm going to give uh, The Dark Invasion of Earth an 8 out of 10. And finally, at number 1, we have The Chase. As I said during The Dalek Invasion of Earth review, all of the Dalek stories during Hartnell's era just get better and better. I know that the Daleks in this story aren't the best villains they could be. Some scenes are a little silly, like when they get beaten up by Frankenstein or thrown overboard of the ship. But this story is just too fun to let that drag it down. Similar to the Keys of Marinus, this story is broken down into parts and places. It's a constant pursuit through time and space, with the Daleks slowly catching up to the TARDIS, and the climax at the end on Mechanus, when the TARDIS team meets Steven Taylor, and the Daleks and the Mechanoids have a fight. It's all just so chaotic and entertaining. The longest lasting First Doctor companions also depart in this story, and honestly, I don't think Ian and Barbara could have left any better. It's one of the best departures. So I'm going to give this a 9 out of 10. If you did enjoy this video and ranking, please hit the like button down below. Leave a comment down below saying how you would rank the second season of Doctor Who. Remember to go over to my Instagram. Uh, I'm posting very regularly on there at the moment and reviewing all of classic Doctor Who. I'm watching The Curse of Peladon as I record. Well, not as I record, but just before and probably after I recorded this. Um... Also, check out my Twitter. I'm not posting much on it, but uh, I might do some updates on it. So, you know, check that out. And um, yeah, I think that's it. Um, join me next week where I will review season three. But until then, goodbye. <laughs>